Now let's turn our attention to selectivity in radical halogenations. And in order to do this, we will have to discuss the kinetics and the thermodynamics of these processes. And so let's examine a generic reaction. So we have a methane and we're going to add some halogen to it. And we'll probably add some kind of light here or something to get the reaction going. And we should generate the halogenated version. Um, plus whatever acid, right? Now, there are several halogens that we like to use. Um, there's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Um, we usually don't use fluorine for a very good reason coming up. The reactivity of these is as follows. Fluorine, very reactive. And then chlorine is a little less reactive. Uh, followed by bromine, uh, followed by iodine. And I might be able to put a, a second arrow here because this is quite a step down. Now, what do I mean by, wow, fluorine is very reactive? Well, it's quite exothermic. Chlorine and bromine are also exothermic, but not to this level. This reaction above has negative uh, 435 kilojoules per mole. Uh, for fluorine, it's negative 103 for chlorine, negative 31 for bromine, and plus 50 or endothermic for iodine. And so fluorine tends to be very explosive, or at least difficult to control. And part of that is just because that carbon-fluorine bond is exceptionally strong, which is why it makes very tough polymers, like Teflon. Very heat-resistant, very non-stick. But it makes this process challenging. So it's explosive on this side. And so you will, will generally see chemists avoid adding fluorine to organic compounds just because of that explosive uh, tendency. Chlorine can still have quite a bit of reactivity. You'll notice that it's still very exothermic. Bromine uh, becomes much milder, and then of course iodine, you kind of have to force it because it's endothermic. And because it's endothermic, we'll have to add heat. If we have any prayer of the reaction happening in a reasonable amount of time. Now let's look at how this affects the selectivity of the halogenation. So if we just start off with propane, and we're using that because it really just has two options. We can go secondary substitution or primary substitution. And we're going to compare chlorine to bromine. We'll have the same kinds of conditions. We'll have chlorine, UV light, and we're going to get two products out. And as you would suspect, the more stable radical, the one that would be generated from the secondary radical is the most, or the major product. And we will also generate some of this minor product. Now the same story is true for bromine. 
same reaction. Same ish selectivity. We will have more of the secondary and less of the primary. Now let's actually look at the percentages that we would get if we ran this reaction. If we run this, we'll get about 60% of the secondary substitution for the chlorine. And of course, then that would be about 40% for the primary substitution. So while this is the major product, it's almost 50-50, no, not quite, but it's a more even split. Now let's see what happens with bromine. Bromine is 96% secondary preferred over the primary, 4%. Much more selective for the secondary product. Now why is that? Well, bromine is a much slower reaction. And so the stability of the radical just comes into play more often. It's, it's much easier to form that secondary radical. Because of that, and because this reaction is slower and it's less exothermic, we will tend to favor the secondary product over the primary one. Now remember, any time that we are able to run a reaction much slower or, or not have it very endothermic or exothermic, well, really not have it more exothermic. Endothermic, we can, we can really control those as well, I suppose. We will have more control. There will be more one pathway that is thermodynamically and kinetically easier to take. In this case, it's much easier to take the secondary pathway. Here, because the reaction is so exothermic, it's much quicker overall. So the barrier, the energy of activation be difference between these two is much smaller than the difference between these two. So bromination is more selective. Now we still see that the secondary is favored over the primary, but in bromine it is much more pronounced. And of course you could also extend this over to fluorine and note that you will have probably close to zero selectivity in that case. And in a lot of ways, you'll, you'll probably just over fluorinate or per fluorinate, just every position that you can, it will substitute. And this brings up an interesting point though, well, stepping back into bromine. When we run this reaction, where we have a tertiary carbon, where we could substitute, we will nearly get exclusive substitution at that hydrogen. Now, I know that there's a lot of different possibilities for a radical reaction. And once you form the radical, uh, lots of things can happen, but there is still instances where we have control. And that just has to do with just how stable the radical is. Now, if we look and we actually quantify and we look at how many hydrogens are here, and so there's actually six hydrogens here, six out of eight hydrogens, and there's two there, and, and you put all of that together and put it into math and, and sort out what's the selectivity. For chlorination, the selectivity between uh, tertiary to secondary to primary is 6 to 4.5 to 1. But for bromination, so it's got some selectivity, but 
not a whole lot, right? Um, for bromination, it's much higher. 1,600 times more likely to go tertiary over primary and 72 times more likely to go secondary over primary. And so you can see here that bromination is highly selective towards tertiary carbons and fairly selective towards secondary, as you can see here, when compared to the primary. And so that's a little bit about the selectivity of halogenation, radical halogenation. And it really does come, kinetics and thermodynamics really do play a big part in that selectivity.